Such a pleasure to be here. I want to ask the question, how many entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs soon are in the room? Let me see a show of hands. All right, oh, fantastic. Well, this is exactly the kind of crowd that I love because I've been an entrepreneur actually now for 40 years. And, um, and I'm gonna share some of my, some of the ups and some of the downs because it's, you know, I think watching that video, I like to say, I joke a little bit, my mother wrote that script, okay? <laughs> because it was all about the good stuff, right? But I'm gonna share some of the tough things that I've been through, um, because that's what being an entrepreneur is all about. So, uh, but I, I, I do like to ask the question, we have, my favorite shark is gonna be here later, Damon John. Let's give Damon a round of applause too. That's gonna be a lot of fun, right? Well, how about this shark? Does anyone recognize Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, right? Now, do you know why he calls himself Mr. Wonderful? Because nobody else will. <laughs> no, 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 he loves to call himself Mr. Wonderful. Then actually, we're, it, the sharks, are, we're, we're all cool together. Uh, Mr. Wonderful is, he's a very smart guy. And he does, he's built his brand based on being the tough guy. So. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about building a brand, and, and that's one of the things that can be very powerful. So I, I want to go back. I'm going to tell you a couple stories, how I got started, how I got on Shark Tank, a few Shark Tank stories, and so entrepreneurial tips at the end of the day also, because that's going to be very powerful for everybody to hopefully pick up a few tips. So I go back to the early days when I say, for me, everything was selling when I was young. Because I started as a, actually working in my father's restaurants. I was, I was in, the, uh, in, the, in the bar business, so to speak. He had Harrington's Irish Pub. And then we had, um, I started a little driveway ceiling business. I, I grew up in Ohio where it was cold. And, and, and if you had cracks in your driveway, when the water got in there and froze, those cracks got even bigger. So we had to seal them before the, the, the winter hit and I was knocking on doors, and then I started a heating and air conditioning business when I was in college, and I was very fortunate to run into somebody, my sales mentor. How many have heard of Zig Ziglar before? Right? Okay. So I, I, I'm going to share some of the mentoring and some of the things that were very positive for me and why these things helped me become a better entrepreneur because Zig Ziglar, he wrote 31 books in 36 languages all around the world. He touched literally tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people eventually, and he taught me how to sell because selling is everything. And then I wanted to also help small businesses, so I started something called the Small Business Center. This was actually in 1980. So in 1980, I was helping small businesses. I had a whole floor of an office building, and we had an insurance agency that did the insurance. We had a lawyer that did the legal work. We had an advertising agency. I rented space to each one of these service providers, providing services to all the entrepreneurs in the area. So, so this was a very powerful way for me to start learning about a lot of different businesses. And we actually also sold businesses and so we would sell the business, then help you do your legal, your accounting, your graphics, your logos, your insurance, all the things necessary to be successful. So this was the early days for me of being an entrepreneur. And I'm going to tell the quick story how I got into then infomercials, because the As Seen on TV business has been very powerful for me. 
So I'm going to ask a question. How many remember TV back, back in when it was black and white television? Do we have anybody in here? Okay, we do. Yeah, we go. There we go. Antoine over there. You remember, right? Okay. Uh, I've been coming here, by the way, for to the Bahamas for oh, over 30 years, and I just love it here. I have friends here, and it's. I live in Florida, so it's a, it's a special place for me, and. I'm just really excited to be able to share some of the things that, that I'm going to be sharing tonight. So, um, I, I mean, just black and white, watch this, because this was back in the day. You remember the Beatles. So that was, I remember those days, black and white TV, but then cable came along. There was CNN, was 24 hours of news. MTV, 24 hours of music. Uh, ESPN, 24 hours of sports, and then I got to Discovery Channel, and that was what was on the screen. There was colored bars on the screen. So I called the cable company, and I said, hey, I'm not getting anything on Discovery. What's the problem? I'm, I'm paying for that channel. And they said, oh, Discovery is only an 18-hour-a-day network. Six hours a day is going to be colored bars, nothing on the screen. And so that's when the light bulb went off, all right? And I said, I have to figure out what I can put on that TV channel that can make some money. So, so here I was. I was at the Philadelphia Home Show. And there was one booth with this huge crowd around this one guy. He had a knife in his hand. He was cutting through a Coca-Cola can. And then he would go through a muffler. He would go through a pair of sneakers with the knife. And he said, it's called the Ginsu knife. And you get two of them for $19.95. But wait. There's more, six free steak knives, okay, <laughs> right? And, it, and he was loading them up with more knives, and I watched this guy, and people were throwing thousands of dollars at this gentleman. Literally, he, he would get 10 people, they would, five or six of them would buy the set, and then he'd grab another 10, and five or six of them would buy, and I watched him for about an hour. And when he got on break, I said to him, I said, who are you, what's your name? I'm Kevin Harrington, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm, I've just never seen a sales pitch so powerful. He said, my name's Arnold Morris, and I do this every week, 40 weeks a year. And I said, Arnold, I said, that is an amazing pitch, but I have an idea. Are you familiar with what's going on on TV right now, Arnold? He said, what are you talking about? I said, six hours a day on Discovery is nothing. And, I, and, and he said, what's that have to do with us? I said, this is what I want to do. I want to film your presentation and let's go cut a deal with Discovery, give them a percentage of sales, and let's see if we can make some money together. Because why should you have to just keep traveling day after day, week after week, all around the country selling these knives? If we can film it once, put it up on Discovery. And that's what we did. And here's that original clip from the back in the 80s. If you take a tomato, the weight of the knife alone cuts that tomato. Let me ask you something. How many knives do you have at home this sharp? You could drop the tomato on top. Pretty sharp, right? You know what one young lady said? <laughs> Can you cut them thin? I said, thin, one tomato will last you all week long. So how many have ever seen that kind of a, that pitch before, the Ginsu, right? Right? It, it, so this became so powerful that when I show you the numbers, it went on, I call it the world's first viral video, went on to do over five hundred million dollars in global sales around the world. Let's give Arnold Morris a round of applause for that big success. Arnold was amazing. Now, you know what Arnold said to me? He said, Kevin, I know a lot of other people that do demonstrations. He said, if I introduce you to other pitch guys like me, will you cut you know, partnership kind of deal with me or bring me in on it? And I said, absolutely. So he brought Billy Mays and he brought Wally Nash and John Parkin, and all these other guys that came, and girls that came to us, and we created all of these kind of infomercials, all the way, you know, the George Foreman type products, the Jack LaLanne and the Juicer, and just product after product after product that kept coming to us, and we just put them up on that downtime that was on the national TV. But if there's downtime in the U.S., there's downtime all around the world. So we actually started taking them into foreign languages and foreign markets. We were in Europe, in, in Spanish, and in Dutch, and in German, Italian, French, Swedish. We went into Latin America, and in Spanish, and Portuguese, Asia, the Asian markets also. 
So, so this is what kind of catapulted what was happening in my world. And then one day, this now getting into a little bit of Shark Tank story, and then we're going to talk about some of, the, some of the tough things that happened then after this because, well, let me just say, I got a phone call, and it was Mark Burnett on the other line, and he said, hey, Kevin, I'm shooting a new TV show, and I'd like to see if you want to come out and talk to me. And, and I said, Mark, I said, you're the guy, you do The Apprentice, you do The Voice, you do The Survivor. I said, what is it that you want to talk to me about? He said, well, I, I can't tell you all about it over the phone. Get on a plane, I'll pick up your airfare, come on out here, and I'll tell you all about it when you get here. But it's called Shark Tank, and, and just you're going to enjoy hearing all about this show. So I got off the phone, I was excited. I told my wife, I said, I said to my wife, I said, you won't believe it. I just got off with Mark Burnett. He's, he's got this new show that he's doing. He won't tell me what it is. It's called Shark Tank. She said, well, I know why he won't tell you. You know what the crazy things he does to those people on that Survivor Island show? Maybe he's going to do something like that on Shark Tank to you, okay? And I'm like, hmm, wait a minute. What is Shark Tank, okay? And so, I mean, Shark Tank, it doesn't even sound like a business show when you think about it, right? So uh, I, I, it, it obviously is. There's five sharks, and we get pitched, and we invest in ideas and products, and that is the power of television, and this has been a very successful show for many, many, it's in its 10th season now. So, it, in fact, it runs in Latin America, it runs in Asia, it runs in hundreds of millions of homes around the world. So, I, I've got to tell one more Shark Tank story, and, and then I've got to tell you some of the tough things that were going on in my life around this time. So, it, it, here's, here's a great picture. This is Robert Herchevich from Shark Tank. There's Damon, you're going to see him in a little bit. And there's uh, Robert got married, and there's Barbara Corcoran on the other side over there. And so we were all at the wedding, and, and I just, the story behind the wedding is pretty cool because one day uh, we were all hanging at the uh, back at Shark Tank, and the, the, how many have ever seen Dancing with the Stars? Is that, that runs down here, right? So, so Dancing with the Stars producers it, they're both Dancing with the Stars and Shark Tank. They're both on ABC Network. So the Dancing with the Stars producers were over at Shark Tank, and they said, would any of the sharks like to be on Dancing with the Stars? And Robert Herchevich right away said, yes, he wanted to do it. So, so, that, so they're, they're like, oh, hey, Robert's going to do it. And I, I had said to my wife, what do you think about me being on a show like Dancing with the Stars? She said, oh. No, I'd never let you go on that show, okay? And I'm like, wait a minute, what's the problem? Why, why, why can't, I mean, Robert wants to go on Dancing with the Stars. She said, no, they dance way too close on that show, and I wouldn't want to see you on national TV dancing like that. And so we said, okay, well, let's, uh, let's let Robert do it. He'll try it, and let's see what happens. So here's, th this is Robert in his segment from Dancing with the Stars. And it, look at it at the very beginning. It actually looks like shark tanks. Watch this. So this is where the story gets crazy. The girl in the middle it, that he married is the girl from Dancing with the Stars, okay? And my wife said, I told you, they got a little close on that show, okay, right? And she said, and by the way, you're never gonna be on that show either. So I'm like, all righty, I got you, no problem. And wow, hey, they just had twins. Let's give them a round of applause. Robert Hertzvick and his wife, unbelievable. Yeah, he's, a, he's an amazing guy. The sharks are so cool, and I'm, I'm so excited that you're going to get to hear from Damon tonight also. So, um, so, so let me tell you what was happening, though, because I mentioned 
I'm an entrepreneur, things got tough for me, and what was happening is TV, newspapers, magazines started this decline. And we all know, I mean, TV viewership, it's actually dropping. Millennials aren't watching as much TV as they used to. They're ditching the TV sets. In fact, if you look at some of the numbers, 50% of the viewers have left the TV in the, in the United States. And it's, I don't know exactly what the numbers are here, but ESPN lost 12 million subscribers. 56 million people have cut the cord. So here I am. I'm an entrepreneur in the as seen on TV business, and it's dropping. People are running from television. Millennials aren't watching. I have a 20 year old. When he got his, uh, he was going to college, and I was over at his apartment, and the cable guy was coming. And I said, Oh, I said, the cable guy's here. What, you know, he's getting his furniture and his, all the stuff getting ready for college. I said, What cable package are you getting? He said, Oh, he said, Well, I think he was embarrassed. He says, Dad, I'm not getting cable, I'm just getting internet. And I'm like, oh, Nicholas, I said, how do you think we're paying for this, okay? I'm the as seen on TV guy, okay? We need some, we need some TV in here, right? So, um, and, and so he got the basic cable package, but he never watches it. And so, like, this is happening to me now. So here I am, the entrepreneur, the as seen on TV guy. We had done celebrity after celebrity. Everything we touched, really, up until now, was working. But I'm going to show you one. And I'm going to tell you what happened. you got to watch this. So what, here's an infomercial. I knew that something really bad was going on in our world when this project hit. Watch this. Now you can put on your favorite music and have fun dancing all those extra inches and pounds away. Presenting the one-of-a-kind, low-impact, calorie-burning, muscle-toning, total body exercise that's fun, fast, and easy. The revolutionary new twist sizer from the man who got the whole world twisting, Chubby Checker. All right, so if a man named Chubby wants you to do a fitness product, you should say no, okay? <laughs> and I, I, but I thought, wow, it's the fun way to exercise. We put hundreds of thousands of dollars into this project, but it bombed. Because why? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but one of them was TV was dropping so rapidly we just couldn't make the same shows work, and we knew we had to do something different. And so I had, at this point, at 500 employees, I had a huge fulfillment center that was 100,000 square feet. I had a, a customer service center with 100 people. I had a 35,000 square foot production studio. I had 500 plus employees, and literally, things were, the wheels were falling off of our business. Right? We had peaked out at about $500 million a year, and now I felt like, well, this was us. We owned As Seen on TV, Inc., As Seen on TV.com. We had hundreds of products, but every time I walked in my office on a Monday morning, this is what it felt like. So how many, as entrepreneurs, have had a bad week before. Let me see a show of hands. Come on now, let me see a real show of hands. Okay, well, I was having a bad year, so it was really tough. And so um, I actually said, you know what, it feels like this on, you know, when I came in, because most of our business happened over the weekend. And I come in on Monday and I'm like, wow, our sales are down by 20%. The celebrity stuff wasn't working, people weren't watching TV. But I said, I need some help. And so I think you know, there's a turning point for me in my life, and I'm going to tell you exactly what happened and how I turned this around. Because entrepreneurs, got to got to get up, dust themselves off, and go back at it again. And so I love what's happening here in the Bahamas. And, I, and actually, when I think about it, here we are. Everyone's here for a reason. They're, they, you could have been doing something else tonight. You're here because you want to learn, you want to hear some stories, you want to hear some education, and I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you some amazing things that I learned that came out of this downfall that I had, because I got invited to go meet somebody, and this was, an, was, was, was a weekend, not too far from here, I got invited to go hang out with Richard Branson at Necker Island. Has anyone ever been to Necker Island from here? Let me just see. It's a beautiful place, not too far from here. So it, 
it, this turned out to be a really nice little thing for me to be able to go and hang out with Richard Branson because Richard said, Kevin, I've been following what you're doing. I know that as seen on TV is down, television viewership is down, your business is down, come hang out with me for the weekend with a couple people and we're going to spend three days together and we're going to map out a strategy to go forward and turn this thing around. And so that is exactly what I did. I spent the weekend with Richard and we hung out and we came up with three amazing steps of business ideas. And that's what I'm going to share with you now for the next few minutes. I'm going to tell you what, did, what, what, what do you do when you're down and you need to turn things around. So I'm going to give you the three steps. The first thing that we came up with is you need to build a dream team and you need to build a new dream team because I had an old dream team of old TV people. They were in radio, newspapers, magazines, television. They, that's all they knew and they just kept focusing in those areas. But we said, where did all the eyeballs go? Viewership has dropped. 56 million people have cut the cord. Where are they? Well, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're, on, they're Googling, they're YouTubing, they're doing all of these digital Netflix, et cetera, right? You have to follow the eyeballs. So this new dream team, you need resources that you don't have. You need to get the logistics people, the product people, the operational, financial, the tech gurus, maybe it's celebrities and influencers, but also I didn't know even what digital advertising was all about. So you need some digital advertising gurus. And this is what we started doing. So, so we had to turn things around. We had to get some new people, sell off some of the old assets, but get a new younger team of people that are coming in to play in this new digital world. Now, there's a couple slides here that I'm going to show you that get a little bit long. And later, I'm going to give you a way to get all of the slides here. So don't worry about writing them all down. But Richard Branson said, you got to put a new business plan together, and you got to maybe raise a little bit of capital. So, so there, these are the nine steps of a business plan. I see some of you are taking pictures, and that's great. Please do. But in a few minutes, I'm going to give you a way that you can get all of these slides. We'll just send it right to you, to your, to your phone or to your computer. So, um, but you know, one of the things when you're putting a business plan together, you need a sales and marketing plan is very important, number four, right? And then you also need to know how to talk to investors. And so one of the things that I pride myself on is I'm, I'm an investor, and that's why I'm on Shark Tank, because I take pitches, right? Well, I also know how to make a pitch, because many times the companies that I get involved with I don't write all the checks. We write maybe the first check. One time we needed $20 million. I wrote the first 250,000, and then we went out and raised 19 plus million. And so you need to know how to talk to investors and know what the sweet spots are for investors. And again, feel free to take pictures, but I'm gonna give you a download on all of this stuff. But, the, and, and let me just, let me give you two examples. Some investors, Look at where it says healthy profit margins. They want to see a company that has healthy profit. But guess what? Some investors don't want to see that. They'd rather see exponential growth, the one right below it. And let me explain. When Mark Zuckerberg was raising money for Facebook, he needed $5 million, and he was going to give away 10% of Facebook. But he had no sales. He had no profits. But what he had was this plan that showed exponential growth of, of customer acquisition. So when he met with Peter Thiel and showed him his acquisition plan to get to 10 million subscribers to Facebook, Peter Thiel wrote him a check for $5 million with no profits and no sales. There's a different pitch for different types of investors. And that's what I've learned how to do, and that's part of what I'm showing you here. So learn some of this, and I'm going to send you all this stuff, anybody that would like to see it. So you, you, the first step coming out of Richard Branson's weekend that I spent 
was get a new dream team, get a great business plan, and be ready to raise some capital. That was step number one. Step number two was embrace digital disruption and be prepared to build your brand. Now, how many here have ever created tons of content around themselves in building their brand? Let me see a show of, of hands. Are there, are there any folks here? I see one, two, three, really literally only a handful, which is, is not necessarily surprising, but let me give you a couple of tips on what I'm talking about. And because you know what Richard Branson said to me? He said, Kevin, you built Arnold Morris's brand, the Ginsu guy. You built Tony Little's brand, the fitness guy. You built Jack LaLanne's brand. You've been building all of these brands, but you never built your own brand. So I said, you're right. I've got to do that. That's very, very important. So, so right away, and let, and let me just explain a little bit about when I say embrace digital. Look at this slide, and you're going to understand what I'm saying. It, in the digital age, the years that it took to reach a market audience of 50 million, in radio, it took 38 years to get to 50 million listeners. In TV, it took 13 years to get to 50 million viewers. The internet got there in four years, the iPod 3, Facebook 2, the Pokemon Go app got to 50 million downloads literally in 15 days, right? Now, here's the, here's the mind-blowing one, and this is Ed Sheeran, he got to 375 million downloads in one week. This is Ed Sheeran. You know I want your love. Your love was handmade for somebody like me. Come on now, follow my lead. I so, I asked the question. You think the world's moving a little faster? Yeah? Okay? Absolutely. And so, if you don't embrace it, the world is moving exponentially, but we're used to a linear movement. So you need to get out of the linear mode into the exponential mode. And that's what I had to do because I had to embrace digital and jump into this. And, and, it, and I'll give you an, an example of a big, big company that didn't do digital. It, they didn't embrace it. Time Inc. They own Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, 37 magazines. Their sales had been dropping for many years. Uh, six, seven years in a row. In fact, recently they just had to sell the magazine because they, they realized they couldn't survive as a standalone entity, even though they had 37 properties, right? But I'm friends with Steve Forbes from Forbes magazine, and I asked Steve, I said, Steve, time has been going like this. Tell me what's going on with your business. And he said, Kevin, he said, we are crushing it. We've gone from a million monthly readers to over 50 million monthly readers. We have our highest readership in 98 years. And you know why? 70% of what we do is digital now. And I said, wow. I said, time went like this. Forbes went like this. 50 million monthly readers. And so I said, but how'd you do it? He said, simple. See where it says 1,500 freelance contributors? What he did is he started tuning into digital and getting freelance social media influencers, people like me, to write weekly articles. So I started giving them content on a weekly basis. So did 1,500 other people. Now, we were seen in, on Forbes.com, but what did we have to do by contract? We had to send it to all of our followers also. So, so 1,500 people were sending it to tens of millions of followers on a daily basis basis. And so that's how he used digital to build the magazine and crush it and have his highest readership in 98 years. So he embraced digital instead of Time Magazine just letting it go. And so this is why I say, you, if you're going to embrace digital, that now is the time. And I say you got to build your brand. So whatever business you're in, um, get a, start thinking about how do you do it. I, I, I came out with a couple of books. I came out with a digital magazine. I started to become, I wanted to be an authority in the world of As Seen on TV and product development. And so my first book, Act Now, How I Turn Ideas into Million Dollar Products. I then got on radio talk shows and started doing some amazing things. In fact, what I say is this led 
to creating content. And let me explain what content creation is all about. It's, it's, it's books, it's magazines, it's radio shows, it's TV shows, getting on TV. Uh, I know um, there's amazing opportunities for that, even right here in the Bahamas. Charitab charitable fundraisers, podcast. I was on a podcast yesterday that did six million downloads of the podcast, right? It was with a gentleman named Ed Milet. And, and so I do, I do a weekly podcast of my own, but I also go on other people's podcasts because now I'm getting all these followers, millions and millions of followers because I'm out there creating content. Now, let me explain, and you, this will put it into perspective. There's a, a woman in the United States that's a billionaire, and she became a billionaire doing one simple thing, interviewing experts. And that's the third from the bottom. You know who I'm talking about? Oprah Winfrey. Exactly. All she did, she was in the, on the news. She started interviewing experts, and everybody that was following the experts and these celebrities started following her, and they wanted to be on the Oprah show, and she was launching books and products and billion-dollar businesses. So uh, she joined Weight Watchers, and that company went up. She grew the stock by over $300 million in the first week. So, so creating content is what it's all about in terms of building your brand. So it's my goal here today is to leave you with as many ideas on how you can build your business, how you can build your brand. Um, you know, joining groups on LinkedIn, for example. You can join one at a time, or on LinkedIn, for, for, for me, there was a group that had 900,000 entrepreneurs. I linked into it, and I started giving content out on a, on a daily basis, and, and commenting on the articles, and I became part of that group, and tens of thousands of those 900,000 started following me. So I picked up tens of thousands of followers by just getting aggressive in the creation of content with other groups. So it's, you can't sit there and expect it to happen. You have to go out. You gotta be proactive, right? And so this next slide, again, it's another one of those kind of educational slides. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but once you start creating the content, you have to be able to manage the inquiries that are coming. And that's, that is now what I call creating funnels. And so let's not bore the crowd here because you know, we're trying to stay high level, but the bottom line is this. When I was going on radio shows and talking, I'd say, hey, go to a certain website, and then they would enter the funnel, and now we, we, we created what's called a lead, that's the lead magnet going on the radio show. The tripwire is then saying, hey, by the way, would you like a free DVD or a free ebook, something for free where people now are opting in, they're tripping in to get more information, right? Now you're starting to build your list, and now you have a core offer that you can offer them, and then you can do all kinds of other, you know, email automation and retargeting, okay? It's a little bit complicated. Again, I'm going to send anybody that wants all of this. In just a minute, I'm going to show you how to get it. So, uh, but building funnels is the last step of the second step that we came out of Richard Branson, which is building your brand and embracing digital. Because how many have ever built a funnel before? Let me see. Any, anybody in the audience build a funnel? One, two, three, five, ten. It's an amazingly low number. I've built over a thousand funnels in the last 12 months, and every one of them is generating leads for the different products and things that I'm doing. So it's, it's important that you start focusing on how do you create content, and then how do you handle these leads that are coming from the creation of the content, okay? So that's number two. And so the last thing that I want to leave everybody with is something that was very powerful because Richard said, so Kevin, you, you, you've got to build a dream team, go get some digital people, get some younger people, some of your old timers that are the old TV and radio and newspaper guys, get rid of them and get some really 
tight new people that understand how the world works and how this digital world works. Build your brand by creating content, creating funnels. But then he also said, you always go back to the power of what you know. And by the way, um, th this is where I said, if you want these slides, if you want to become a key person of influence, and this is what we're, when we talk about building your brand, we talk about becoming a key person of influence, you can text the, the, the initials KPI to that phone number. I think you've got to put a one before it here. 721-727-888-2100. And I will send you the entire slide deck that I'm presenting right now tonight. So you just have, when you text, just put KPI to 1-727-888-2100. You're going to get all of this will just show up automatically within about 48 hours for you, okay? So, um, so go back to what I said was the power of proven. And for me, this, the, the power of proven was step number three. And so what in my life was proven? Well, we talked about it. You know, Zig Ziglar, selling. This is something that I always could go back to, but how do I tie it into today's world? I was using Zig Ziglar's principles in building funnels, in writing copy, and all of the things that I knew how to do. Going back to when I was a, a, a young boy, knocking on doors, selling driveway ceiling, and selling heating and air conditioning and furnaces. And so, um, you know, I, I wanted to also go back to what I knew and go back to what I knew was proven in my life. And so, so that's, that's what I did because I said, you know that more than half of the top 100 billionaires on the Forbes list started in sales, okay? And so, I mean, it, it's, it, I, I always say it, sales is everything because when you're selling, it, you're making profits, you're building businesses, and so I wanted to make sure that I focused in that world of building sales businesses. And again, it goes back to what I was saying when you're creating content and you've got people following you and then, you're, then you have something to sell, that's what you've got to do. So, um, you know, so, you know, again, I'm, I, I always say that I am a salesman. I, I look back on my career, there I was, a, a young entrepreneur, I'm proud to be in sales. I was mentored by one of the greatest sales trainers in all of the world. And so, um, God bless, when, when Zig Ziglar passed away in 2012, he had never done any social media, but they left a, they built a Facebook page for Zig in his passing, and over four million people left Zig a message on his Facebook. So now, as, and he's passed away now six years ago, but there's 4.5 million active followers following Zig Ziglar. And so this is, so for me, this shows the power of what's proven, the power of selling, and learning how to sell. And, and so, you know, I have to say that I've never left that alone. I've always gone back. I buy books. I read. I've got stacks of books that I still, and, I, and I've read this book, The Secrets of Closing the Sale Masterclass, Ziegler on Selling, more than a dozen times because I learn it. There's over 100 closing techniques in these books. The other book I love is Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. That's a great book to get. So, so, you know, what I'm trying to help anybody here just to, to, to think about how can you take your business, take your ideas to the next step, because let me just say, this, this is, business is not easy, right? I mean, it's, you know, starting a business, you need some help, you need some coaching, you need some mentoring, and that's ultimately what being part of this whole group is all about, and, and I, I know that there's, there's many entrepreneurs that actually end up getting funded here on an annual basis through the program, which is very powerful. And so, you know, when, when you understand that business, sometimes it goes up, you got to come back a little bit. I mean, look, I said it when I talked about my, my you know, my as seen in TV business. What was happening 
We built the business up to here, and all of a sudden, our sales were dropping because the eyeballs were leaving. They were going somewhere else. But then we said, let's follow the, those eyeballs. And then we went on Facebook. We went on Pinterest. We went on Instagram. We've been on YouTube. All of that, 70% of our business is now digital. So we didn't let the downs take us down. We just followed it and kept on selling and kept on going back to what was proven, which is the power of sales, because we use sales to sell in every single one of our infomercials. And this is why I say that education is the key, because, I mean, I'm a college dropout. I, I, I'm not proud to say that, but, you know, my son, Brian, is, he, he went to Penn State, graduated four years, business degree. He now works inside my company, and he's super intelligent. But he's, he's, he understands business and finance, and it's great because he's part of my company in that regard. So I focus on the sales. He focuses on the business and the finance. And, and, and so, yes, education is key depending on what side of it you want. But entrepreneurial education, a day in the life of entrepreneurs, you go up, you go down, you go up, you go down. But, you know, there's a saying Winston Churchill said, that success is being able to go from failure to failure without the loss of enthusiasm, all right? So it's, it, I don't like to think that, oh, wow, get so enthused about failing, but that's ultimately you got to get up and dust yourself off because it's not easy. Every day can be a learning curve and a little bit of a challenge. So be prepared to handle that, and, and, but, but don't let it get you down. Don't let it get you down because entrepreneurship is fun. You get to work the hours that you want. And I will say this. The one thing that I, that, that I always recommend is if you're not prepared to go it alone, get the dream team and maybe think about partnering with somebody. And that's ultimately, that's what we do as sharks. We partner with entrepreneurs. I'm here, and, you know, I live in Florida. It's a it's literally, it's 37 minutes to get over here from Miami today, right? So partnering with folks in, in the Bahamas is something that I look forward to, and I'm open to deals and opportunities, and, you know, I want to just say that it, it's really exciting for me to be here because um, I, I just, I want to leave a couple last thoughts, and we're going to finish up and, and, and let the other speakers come on now because I, I just want everybody to take some kind of action over the next couple days, right? You're here for a reason. You're here because you, you're motivated, you have an idea, you have a business or a service or a product, you want to take it to the next step, just follow a few of the things that we've talked about here, get into digital, look at getting a dream team, partner with somebody, multiply your results by taking action. Because I, I'm going to give you the, 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 the years of my life now, because um, I, I have the first 30 years I spent trying to figure out what did I want to do. And I, at the very end of those first 30 years, I found infomercials, and so that was my first 30. Then I spent the next 30 years doing infomercials and products and, and all those kind of as seen on TV things. But now, my next 30 years, the legacy that I want to leave is empowering and enabling entrepreneurs. And that's why I go around the country. This, this morning, I was sitting in Miami with a group from Microsoft who were, they wanted some entrepreneurial tips. And tomorrow I leave for Stockholm, Sweden, and I'm gonna be with a couple thousand people over there. Uh, and last week I was in Sao Paulo talking about entrepreneurship. Brazil, very entrepreneurial country. So. So this is my mission, is to help enable and empower the world of entrepreneurship, and that's why I'm excited to be here. So I just, I want to say, how many here are ready to make this happen? Can I see a show of hands? Yeah? Okay? All right? Well, I, I, I want to I ask everybody then, I have four last words of encouragement, and this came from my buddy, Tony Little. And so, can everybody get up on your feet, because I, I want you to see this. Get up on your feet, because Tony Little said, I want everybody in the Bahamas to think of this 
And it's basically, as I say it, you should say it. You can do it. You can do it. And here's Tony Little. You can do it. You, you can, can do, do it. it. You, you can, can do, do it. it. You, you can, can do, do it. it. Thank you for having me. You can do it, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Thanks.